If you're mostly familiar with the larger denominations of the Reformed and Presbyterians, you might be surprised at some of the positions held by the six denominations that we're briefly going to look at today. Many of the things they stand for were held universally by all Presbyterian and Reformed churches in the past, something these churches will probably be quick to tell you, but today they are just a very small minority. The first three of these churches have a history in the Dutch Reformed Church. This church, which was built on the principles of Reformed theology, became increasingly theologically liberal, leading to churches seceding from it in the year 1834. Eventually, these seceders would emigrate to the United States. In the U.S., one might expect they would join with the Dutch Reformed Church that already existed, but there were issues. The Dutch Reformed Church, which would later become known as the Reformed Church in America, used hymns in worship, had open communion, didn't preach the Heidelberg Catechism, and wasn't exactly a supporter of the seceder cause anyway. Way. But some churches in 1857 had split from the Dutch Reform to create the Christian Reformed Church, and it was into this denomination that most of the immigrating seceders would go. By the 1950s, though, even the Christian Reformed Church wasn't as strict on certain distinctions as some of the immigrating Dutch Reformed required. As a result, some remained independent or loosely affiliated with each other. In 1974, several joined together to create the Free Reformed Churches of North America. One reason the Free Reformed Churches give is that the CRC taught presumptive regeneration. They say, however, they soon realized the impact of the fact that the Christian Reformed Churches had, in 1908, adopted the conclusions of Ultrecht 1905, which insisted on adhering to the doctrine of presumptive regeneration. Our members did not presume children of believing parents to be saved. They believed that such children needed to be taught that they were born in sin and are in need of salvation, and that they must be born again. Others who came over to the U.S. remained affiliated with their home denominations, such as the Netherlands Reformed Congregations. They were immigrants who came to America from a particular line of two seceder denominations who had merged with each other to form the Reformed Congregations, or Hereformeer Hementen in the Netherlands. The U.S. congregations have also retained the name of Netherlands Reformed Congregations, though they are not ecclesiastically tied to the churches in the Netherlands anymore. In 1993, some churches split from the NRC to form the Heritage reform congregations. The HRC says that the most substantive underlying issue to future HRC members and congregations was Christ-centered preaching, combined with the preaching of an unconditional offer of grace. The NRC wouldn't necessarily accept that description. A divorce and remarriage of a prominent minister also factored into the division. The other three denominations we're looking at have a heritage on the Scottish Presbyterian side of things. The Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland formed with two ministers leaving the Free Church of Scotland in 1893. The story of the Presbyterian Reformed Church began with a couple North American congregations that had both left other denominations, joining together in 1965. In 1974, one left to join the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland, leaving just one church, but they grew over the decades to now have seven churches. In the year 1900, the Free Church of Scotland mostly merged with the United Presbyterian Church of Scotland into the United Free Church of Scotland, but some churches stayed out, retaining the name Free Church of Scotland. In 2000, there was a split, with both sides claiming to be the true Free Church. The majority expelled the ministers of the minority, which has taken the name of Free Church of Scotland continuing. In 2010, the Free Church of Scotland, the branch without the continuing modifier, began allowing hymns and musical instruments. The previous video on this channel is about the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. Like that one, this video won't go into the details of Reformed theology. All of these denominations are strictly confessional, and so they all hold to things like five-point Calvinism, for example. Instead, we'll talk about some of the things they hold to that even other confessional Reformed and Presbyterian churches don't necessarily believe or enforce as strictly. The term Reformed nowadays is used to refer to Dutch and Continental Reformed and Presbyterians alike. In this video, sometimes I'll distinguish between these two sets of denominations by referring to the three Presbyterian and the three Reformed ones. This is more of a historical designation, as theologically they are all Reformed and all have a form of church polity that is Presbyterian. Let's briefly cover the view of the Bible and the confessions of each of these denominations. 
All six denominations refer to the Bible as being infallible and without error. Heritage Reformed and Netherlands Reformed, along with the three Presbyterian denominations, use the King James Version exclusively. The Free Reformed Churches of North America have one-third that uses the KJV and two-thirds that use the New King James Version. The Presbyterian denominations and also the HRC all affirm the Westminster Confession of Faith and utilize the larger and shorter catechisms. With Dutch Reformed Heritage, the FRC, NRC, and HRC all affirm the three forms of unity, those being the Belgic Confession, the Canons of Dort, and the Heidelberg Catechism. The HRC is the only of the six that affirm both the three forms and WCF. On communion, all of the denominations take a level of care on who participates. Several of these churches use the language of fencing the table. For example, the Free Church Continuing says, There is the fencing of the Lord's table. The minister will speak briefly from a discriminating text in order to encourage the poor in spirit to take their places at the Lord's table and to dissuade the ungodly from sitting at the table and bringing judgment on themselves. Like a fence, the aim is to keep out those who shouldn't be there and keep in those who should. For the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland, any person planning to participate has to go before the session and make profession of faith. Likewise, the Presbyterian Reformed Church says that those from other churches are examined by the session, and the Free Reformed Churches state that those from other churches must meet with a consistory. The Free Reformed Churches also state that none shall be admitted to the Lord's Supper except those who, according to the regulations of the local church, have made confession of faith and are reputed to be of a godly walk. In the Netherlands Reformed congregations, there is great importance put on a person being a true child of God before partaking, lest they partake unworthily. For example, in the denominations magazine, they have stated, We may not forget that the Lord Jesus instituted this sacrament for his children only. Some of God's children have more insight and others less into these spiritual matters, but a beginning of God's work cannot be missed, and some experimental knowledge of Christ is necessary to take part with fruit in the commemoration of Christ's death. Also in our own circles, the dividing line becomes more and more vague, and it is to be feared that there are those who come to the Lord's table with only a church right and a historical faith, but missing true saving faith. They have made confession of faith and go automatically to the Lord's Supper. It is to be feared that many of them will become speechless when the king will ask them, Friend, how earnest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless, Matthew 22:12. If we are strangers of the life of grace, then we do not belong at the Lord's table, even when we are members of the church. They also stated, We have all known from our youth that we not only need a church right for proper participation at the Lord's Supper, but that a divine right is also needed. The church right refers to external matters in one's confession, talk, and walk. The divine right refers to internal matters of soul experience. This emphasis often leads to many members in the NRC not participating in any given communion service. Though I risk belaboring the point, I find it important to mention here that the NRC makes a difference between a person making a confession of faith, that is, in the acceptance of the doctrines of Christianity, and having true personal faith. They say, in the practice of our church life, the making of confession of faith is definitely not looked upon as a confession of true, personal, and saving faith. If we should desire to view it in this way, then I feel that many would shrink back from it and would honestly say that they could not do so. We would not want to keep young people who confess the truth of the scriptures with a historical faith and a desire to live externally in conformity to them from making public confession of faith. But we must always continue telling them that the Lord says, My son, give me thy heart. A common custom of these denominations is to have communicants come forward and sit at the communion table to participate. In the same context of worship, another area in which these churches emphasize the regulative principle of worship is in their singing. First, what may be sung? In the three Presbyterian churches, it's only psalms. This is called exclusive psalmody. Those who practice this often point out that although the New Testament says to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, the words for each are actually different types of psalms, and that the headings to the psalms themselves say whether that given psalm is a psalm, hymn, or song. With that understanding, only these psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs found in the Old Testament book of the psalms are acceptable to sing in worship. No hymns with uninspired lyrics. Likewise, Netherlands Reformed are exclusive psalmody. Heritage Reformed and Free Reformed are very close. Some Free Reformed churches hold to a total exclusive psalmody. However, there are a few non-psalms allowed in these congregations. 
Next up is the question of accompaniment. This is where the difference in the confessional understanding and history of the Presbyterians versus Dutch Reformed shines through. The three Presbyterian denominations are completely a cappella, no instruments allowed. In the three Dutch Reformed denominations, the tradition is to have an organ accompanying the singing. Another custom that is part of the worship of these churches is the wearing of head coverings by women. In the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 11 through 16, Paul writes about head coverings. For example, verse 5 and 6 say, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. In seeking to follow this passage, these churches believe that women should wear a cloth or hat or some other small item of clothing in worship. Of these six denominations, this standard is held more loosely in the Free Reformed Churches and the Heritage Reformed Congregations. This is as good a time as any to mention that these two denominations in particular seem on track to unite into one very soon. They have been meeting together for several years to try and accomplish that. Head coverings is one thing they've discussed as they try to work out any differences they might have. In the FRC's 2020 Synod, the following was described. In the FRC, up until the 1970s and 80s, most women covered their heads in the worship service. Today, this practice is upheld in some FRC congregations, but not others. In most FR churches, this matter is entirely left up to the individual conscience and conviction. Generally speaking, most women in the HRC still cover their heads in the worship service. Twice recently, the HRC Synod was asked to adopt a denominational policy on this matter, but this was declined on the grounds that if it did, the Synod would open the door to making extra confessional pronouncements. Concerning this matter, the Unity Committee recommended to both synods that the issue of whether a woman should have her head covered in the worship service is one that warrants serious consideration, both by consistories and every professing Christian, and must be decided on exegetical grounds alone. The Reformed tradition, unlike some other denominations, does not teach that the Sabbath is done away with or fulfilled to the extent that it should no longer be practiced. Instead, the Sabbath is still in force, but moved to the first day of the week. Among these churches, observance of the Sabbath by not working or engaging in recreation is an important part of Christian living. The Presbyterians seem to be the strictest on this. The Free Church Continuing states, Sunday, which in the Bible is called the Lord's Day or Sabbath, is not a day for commercial activities, but a day for rest and worship. Buying and selling should be strictly confined to the six days of the week, which God gave us for such things. To pursue these things on the Sabbath is to desecrate what God has made holy and to incur his displeasure. Even more strict is the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. They state that all who engage in Sabbath work, except works of necessity and mercy, or who travel by buses, trains, trams, taxis, airplanes, or ferries run in systematic disregard of the Lord's Day, and all who are members of secret societies such as Freemasonry are denied church privileges. And also, in particular, she has opposed Sabbath broadcasting since its inception and counsels against the use of the internet on the Sabbath, except for purposes of necessity and mercy. One of the founding ministers of the Presbyterian Reformed Church was expelled from the Free Presbyterian Church because of their restriction on members using public transport to get to church. Also, the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland issued an open letter to Joel Beek, the most prominent minister in the Heritage Reform congregations, protesting that a Christian cruise he was holding involved travel on the Sabbath, and also stating their dislike of using the name Sunday as opposed to Lord's Day or Sabbath. A few other things about these denominations. All of them are widely opposed to evolution, and churches in all of these denominations often promote young earth creation and teaching that the six days of creation in Genesis are natural 24-hour days. The three Reformed churches spend one of the two Sunday services in catechism study. The Free Reformed Church says, for example, We have the required custom on each Lord's Day to preach in one of the services the points of doctrine treated successively in the 52 Lord's Days of the Heidelberg Catechism. This practice was introduced in the 16th century and made mandatory by the Synod of Dort, 1618-19. The three Presbyterian denominations are opposed to celebrating so-called festival days, such as, for example, Christmas and Easter. The Free Church Continuing says, We do not observe festival days, believing that the only day which God requires us to keep holy is the first day of the week, the Sabbath or Lord's Day. The Dutch Reformed denominations are not so hardline on the matter. An NRC minister, for example, has written, Christian holidays, Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, Ascension, etc., must be celebrated in a Christian manner for their religious significance as practiced in the Reformed tradition. So where are these denominations and how big are they? 
Here's the latest numbers at the production of this video. Free Reformed Churches, 21 congregations, of which 3 are in the U.S. and 18 in Canada. Netherlands Reformed Congregations, 29 churches, 17 in the U.S. and 10 in Canada. Heritage Reformed Congregations, 10 churches, 5 U.S. and 5 Canadian. Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland, 52 congregations, 1 in the U.S., 2 in Canada, most of the others are in Scotland. Presbyterian Reformed Church, 7 congregations, 6 in the U.S., 1 in England. Free Church of Scotland continuing, 40 congregations, 5 in the U.S. and 1 in Canada, once again, the rest mainly in Scotland. As far as the future, as mentioned, the Heritage Reformed Congregations and Free Reformed are looking at merger. So also are the Free Church Continuing and the Presbyterian Reformed Church. Both of these mergers could be completed within a few years. Free Reformed Churches, Heritage Reformed Congregations, and the Presbyterian Reformed Church are part of the North American Presbyterian and Reformed Council, along with other denominations like the Presbyterian Church in America and Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Free Reformed Churches, Heritage Reformed Congregations, and the Free Church Continuing are part of the International Conference of Reformed Churches. This video was made possible by those who support Ready to Harvest at readytoharvest.com. A chart with footnotes that I made in preparation for this video, along with transcripts of this and all my videos, are available to members there. All members can also watch my videos ad-free on that website. If you missed it, the last video on this channel goes more into depth into the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. Ready to Harvest is all about Christian denominations. Subscribe for weekly videos like this one.